Well, welcome back, everyone. You know, Donald Trump ran on uh, immigration policy, one of the things that he ran on. And here to talk about that is Dr. Perry Bush. Welcome. It's good to be here. All right. So, Chris. first of all, do you think this is even possible, the stuff that he wants to, that he's talked about? Well, he's doubling down on these claims and what he's going to do. He said them repeatedly all through the campaign. This is what he's going to do. He's going to, um, first of all, use the Insurrection Act of 1807, which, by the way, gave the president unprecedented powers in the case of a national emergency to use the military, right? Now, I don't think it was designed for this kind of program and whether or not that will survive the courts, even with the expansive view of presidential power that the Supreme Court is carving out, whether or not that will survive a court challenge is one thing. But if the president-elect gets his way, he's going to use the military to round up millions and millions of undocumented people, put them in what appears to be huge temporary holding camps, right? And then he's also going to revoke, he says, that what, what a, a program started by George H.W. Bush, who in my mind was a pretty conservative guy, right, called the Temporary Protected Status, right, by which people uh, fleeing wars in, in severe threat for their lives can come here and claim this temporary protective status and work while they're here, which includes, by the way, about 200,000 Haitians, Right, many of some of whom, two, three thousand, live in our own community here in Lima, and about three hundred fifty thousand Venezuelans. At least people were fleeing dictatorships. Uh, Haiti, by many accounts, is what demographers will call the failed state. I mean, it's it's racked by gang warfare. So people have fled that. They've come here. They're working. Now, if the president-elect wants to deport them all, as he's threatened to do, right, it's going to cause. Imagine the national trauma that this could inflict on the country, as you know, military people go door to door scouring. Uh, people and rounding them up and sending them to camps. And it does then create a whole series of additional problems, Chris, about the fact that uh, what do you do with children who are brought here against their will, right? And the only country they know is this one, the so-called dreamers. You're going to send them all back? Or what about a seven-year-old who was born here to undocumented parents? And a little bit of research I did suggests that there are millions of such children. By the 14th Amendment, if you're born in this country, you are a U.S. citizen. You know, you're going to send their parents back to, to Venezuela while you leave a seven-year-old here? So, I mean, you know, as we huddle around our pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving and think about this mythic story about the first Thanksgiving, turns out there may have been some kind of harvest festival. It wasn't, you know, we like to think of it as a day of which we celebrate inclusion. I mean, it was mythic, but these are the kind of stories you might keep in mind. Is that the mm -hmm. kind of country we really want to be to, to separate kids from families? Right. Well, I'm just I'm I'm very curious about the cost of uh, something like this would entail. Like, but it, it would have to be very expensive. Absolutely, I, you know, but, expensive. But but uh, I mean. Uh, do you have an idea of a range? Have you seen any reports of how much something like this would cost? I haven't seen reports, but, you know, we're talking about the estimates are of 11 or so million undocumented people. I, the, the billions it will cost to round them up, even if you don't care much about the inhumanity of this or the morality of it, just think of the economic cost. You know, the uh, last year undocumented uh, immigrants Spent, uh, contributed some, paid something like seventy billion dollars in taxes, and many of them are doing jobs that many Native American, Native-born Americans, don't want to do, right? And you know, there's a variety of studies out about whether or not immigrants uh, raise or lower wages for people who are already here. Um, the studies are inconclusive, but uh, one study by the Peterson Institute of the Inter International Economics has estimated that expelling immigrants on this kind of scale that the president-elect is talking about would reduce the national GDP by, by 7%, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And perhaps plunge us into recession. So there's a whole series of economic costs and also moral costs that yeah. we need to consider. So do you think um, people were excited about this maybe for safety reasons or is there, uh, what, like when they voted, when they talk about this? Do you think it's something about their, their fear for their safety or is that... Is that well, the president-elect in his campaign told stories. And when, when, you know, hundreds of thousands of people come in to the country, some will be criminals, right? And some criminals have done heinous things, right? And, and they deserve certainly to be prosecuted, right? And we don't want to, you know, none of us really want to have you know, increasing numbers of criminals coming in. But there's other evidence that suggests that people who are undocumented are even less likely to break the law, knowing that even being stopped for a traffic accident is going to get them expelled back across the border, right? Yeah. They may even be more law-abiding across the board 
than, than other folks, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's a very complex story, Chris, with a lot of complexity, but it does raise some moral issues. Yeah. You know, we're talking about the massive expulsion of 11 million people, perhaps with the use of federal troops, yeah, right? Well, Not the kind well, of country we want to be. Dr. Barry, we're going to have to see what happens. I, I always thank you for your insight, and, you know, time will tell, right? It's always good to be here. Yeah, Happy pleasure. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too.